Namaste and welcome back to the DSA classes. Today we are going to be solving a question called as lucky numbers, right? And this is a question which has previously been asked in companies such as Microsoft. Now, what is this question and what is it expecting you to do? Well, there is a huge description which will be given in the question. What that is, let me tell you in a very simple manner, okay? So watch it. You will be given a number n. Your duty is to tell whether the number is a lucky number or not. So you must write a function which returns either true or false. True if it is lucky, false if it is unlucky. Now, how does one decide that a number is lucky or unlucky? Very simple. If n is 13, let me start from 1. 1 to 13, right? I have all these numbers. In the question, you will also have a variable called as counter. Initial value of the counter variable is always going to be 2. Now, what does this mean? What this means is that it is telling, hey, listen, if the counter value is 2, then every second element is unlucky. Every second element is unlucky, which means 2 is unlucky, 4 is unlucky, 6, 8, 10, 12. Well, that if 14 was there, I will keep going. So as you can see, the counter told that every second value is unlucky and luckily your number is not part of the unlucky numbers. But so can I now conclude that my number is lucky, sir? No, not yet. Not yet. Why you may ask? Why? Because what you must now understand is that the counter value is going to increment. It is going to become 3. Now it is telling of all the values which is remaining, all the values which is remaining, every third number is unlucky, which means, see here, first, second, third number. Oh, this is unlucky. Okay. Then uh, again, uh, 1, 2, 3. This number is unlucky. That 1, 2, 3. Okay, it is not there. Even now, did 13 fall within the unlucky numbers? No. Counter value is going to increment. It is going to become 3. I mean, it's going to become 4. Any confusion till here? If it becomes 4, what it means is that every fourth number from the remaining numbers is unlucky, which means, see, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 9 is unlucky. And then 13, and so 1, after that, no more numbers are there, right? Which means it doesn't fall as the fourth number, which means still it is lucky, still it is lucky. Counter variable is going to increment. It is going to become 5. Now, if it becomes 5, out of the remaining numbers, what are the numbers which is remaining? 1 and 1, uh, 3, 7 and 13. 1, 3, 7 and 13. Four numbers are remaining. Every fifth number is unlucky. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, there is no fifth number only. Now, do you notice that the number of values which is remaining is lesser than the counter, is lesser than the counter, how are you able to think? If that happens, then you know that no matter what the counter value becomes, the number that is given to you is not going to fall as an unlucky number. It is not going to be tagged as an unlucky number. And hence, one can conclude that the given number is a lucky number. How are you able to think? So I hope what the question means you have been able to understand and how one arrives at the fact whether a number is lucky or unlucky you have been able to understand. So now the only question remaining is how does one go ahead and write a program to do this? Very easy. Let me try and make you understand. Now look initially n value is 13, counter is 2. I am writing 13 numbers. Now I'm doing something unique. I want you to focus. I'm writing the positional values on top of the numbers. So right now, because there are 13 numbers, 13 is at the position 13 only. Any confusion till here? So these are the positional values. Now counter is 2, which means every second number, every second number is unlucky, which means number at position 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, like that, all the numbers which is at position 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, or in other words, all positional values which are multiples of 2 or even numbers are all unlucky. I'm talking about the positional values, right? Which means 100% all these numbers 
are now unlucky numbers. Would you agree with me? Great. All these are unlucky numbers. Now, to solve this programmatically, how will you check whether your number, whether your number was a part or was at any of these even positions? How will you check that? Well, it's very easy. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to bring a condition box here. Would you agree that initially, if at all this number was at an even position, the number itself also would have been even? Because look at all these numbers, all these numbers are even numbers. Their position is also even, the number is also even. So one easy way for me to check whether the given number to me is lying in an even position or not is to take the number which is n, Divide it by 2 and check if the remainder is equal to 0. n mod 2 is equal to 0. Any confusion till this point of time? Great. So I hope you're able to think. You don't have to run a loop from 1 till n and keep incrementing i value and checking if i is divisible by 2. No need to do all that. Directly take your n value. Divide it by 2 and check if the remainder is 0. If it is not equal to 0, you know it is not a unlucky number. Great, great, great. But it doesn't stop here. In the next, in the next call, in the next call, now the numbers have to reduce. The number of numbers have to reduce because I want to eliminate all the unlucky numbers. Now, how will I go about eliminating all the unlucky numbers? Very simple. See, totally I have 13 numbers. In that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers I have removed. Would you agree around half the numbers I have removed? half the numbers have removed. So see what I will do is to show that half the numbers have been removed. I now am going to update the n value, update the counter. Now please understand what is going to be the new n value if you ask me. All I will do is I will take the number of numbers that I had. I will subtract it with half the numbers n divided by 2. If I do n minus n divided by 2 and what is this 2? It's nothing but the counter. It's nothing but the counter. If I do n minus n divided by 2, n is 13. 13 divided by 2 is 6. 13 minus 6 is nothing but 7. So see that I will update it as the new value of n. So n is now 7. How are you able to think? Counter will anyways have to increment. So it was 2. Now it is going to become 3. Now see, all the numbers that is remaining, I am bringing it here. And now I am putting positional values. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Because please understand, these are the remaining numbers. So this is the updated positional values. Now counter 3 means the number at every third position, which means 3, 6 like that, those values are unlocked. Key. those values are unlucky. Now how will I find whether that whether my number given to me is at a position which is considered to be unlucky? Very simple guys. Watch it. I'm just marking the unlucky numbers for you. So every third one right? So 5 followed by 6. These are the two unlucky numbers and after that nothing is there. Look at the positions. Don't look at the value. Look at the positions. 3, 6, 9, 12, like that it will keep going. How are you able to think? 15, 18, 21. What is unique about these positions? All of them are multiples of 3, are perfectly divisible by 3, which means if at all my number was at that position which is considered to be unlucky, that position should have been perfectly divisible by 3. Would you agree? And look at this, the number that is given to me will always be at the last position. Even in the starting it was in the last position, even here it was in the last position. How are you able to think? And this last position is nothing but the n value. Do you see it's matching? The position and the n value are matching. So for me to check if this position is a multiple of 3 or it's perfectly divisible by 3, all I have to do is check for another condition n mod 3 equal to 0. If n which is 7 mod 3 was equal to 0 then I know this was at a uh, unlucky position but you know 7 mod 3 is not equal to 0 which means even now my number is lucky. Right? So now I have to eliminate these two numbers. 
So I want to update the value of n. In the next call, I want to update the value of n. How will you update it? Very simple. See here, two numbers you have eliminated, correct? How will I arrive at it? Very simple. What was the previous value of n? 7 minus n divided by 3. That's it. What is n? 7. 7 divided by 3 is what? 2. Okay. So, 7 minus uh, 5, uh, 7 minus 2 is nothing but 5 and hence my new value of n becomes 5 and see if I take all the remaining elements and place it here, correctly 5 elements are there. Now, I am putting their updated positions, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I am putting their updated positions, how people will think. Obviously, counter value also will increase, counter is 4. Now, what does this mean? It means every fourth position element is unlucky, which means 9 is unlucky. Then next 8 would have been unlucky, but unfortunately there is no 8, we have only 5 numbers. So 9 is unlucky. Now tell me, I want to find whether my element is at an unlucky position or not. How am I going to do that? Simple. You know that the position that my number is, is always the last position, which is nothing but the value of n. If it was at an unlucky position, and if the unlucky positions are every fourth position, the position or n should have been perfectly divisible by the counter or perfectly divisible by 4. How are we able to think? So, again all I will do is, I will tell n mod 4 is it equal to 0. So, do you see n mod 2 equal to 0, n mod 3 equal to 0, n mod 4 equal to 0. That 2, 3, 4 is nothing but the counter values, which means I can remove all that in general, I can write it as n mod counter is it equal to 0. Simple n mod counter is it equal to 0 is the condition to check whether it, it is at a lucky position or unlucky position. If it is equal to 0, it is unlucky. You must return false. If it is not equal to 0, you must continue doing whatever you are doing and right now luckily it is not in an unlucky position and hence I will now remove all these elements. So, how do I do that? In the next call, in the next call, I am going to update the value of n by telling n minus n divided by 4 and this is nothing but the counter value. Counter value is 4, n value is 5, 5 divided by 4 is 1, 5 minus 1 is nothing but 4 which means the updated value of n is 4, counter will increment will become 5. What does this mean? Every, now I am updating positions also I am showing you see all these are the updated values, positions 1, 2, 3, 4. Now tell me every fifth position element is unlucky. Is there an element at the fifth position? No. So, would you agree? Counter value has surpassed the n value or n value is lesser than the counter value. The moment n value becomes lesser than the counter value, you can guaranteed say that all these numbers are lucky and your number is also part of it and hence the given number was a lucky number. Which means another condition is if n is less than counter, n becomes less than counter, then just return true, just return true because it is a lucky number. So would you agree every time I am taking the problem, breaking it down, breaking it down, breaking it down. Whenever we are able to break it down, can't we recursively perform this? Can't we recursively perform this? So, very simple, easily you can write a recursive function. These are all your base conditions. This n mod counter equal to 0 is the condition where you have to return false because it is unlucky. But if n becomes less than counter, return true, it means it is lucky. So, a simple recursive solution, I am sure everybody can do. Every time update the value of n, right? So, in general here I have to show you what you are doing is n minus n divided by whatever is the counter value. My friends, this is what you are doing because see 2 is counter value, 3 is counter value, 4 is counter value and this is also counter value. That's it. Easy. I am sure everybody understood. Let us go write the recursive function. It is time to write some code. I have created a static function which returns a boolean value because yes or no, true or false, right? Is lucky number is the function name. Now, I will go inside that and all I am going to do is very simple. What is the arguments it is going to take? First argument it will take is the number n, so int n. Next one is the initial value of counter, so I will also pass that, so int counter. 
Next, I'll come inside that, and all I have to do is first I'll write the base condition, the valid base condition. So, if in case the n value becomes lesser than the counter, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to return true because it's a lucky number. Next, I will tell if in case n mod counter is equal to 0. If the position is perfectly divisible by the counter, then we know it's unlucky, so return false. Otherwise, all you have to do is keep recursively calling it. So, see, I will tell return and what to recursively call? Same thing, is lucky number, is lucky number and there I am just going to go and this n value should be updated. How will you update it? You have to remove the unlucky numbers. How did we do that? n minus within parenthesis n divided by the counter. Counter. And then counter value should also increment. So counter plus 1. That's it. Any confusion till here? This is pretty much your lucky number problem. Maybe you would have cracked the Microsoft interview also. Anyways, let's come down and we will go here and all we have to now do is just call the first time. So, system.out.println and uh, I will call my function. I will call this lucky number and uh, let us pass the number as 13 and initial value of counter is 2. That is what the problem says. Okay? Let us go and execute it. If I execute it, clearly one can notice you have got true. Any confusion? Now, let us give an unlucky number. For example, 9, I will pass 9. You know, 9 was an unlucky number. No, no, no. Counter value is 2. Un unlucky number 9. 9. Now, if I execute it, then clearly you can notice false. So, it works perfectly. So, I hope you enjoyed this program. You now go from what you learn, try to recreate the program from scratch on your systems. I will catch you in the next class with an even more exciting program.